So hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Brandy Johnson, um, one of my business partners, Carl Cooper. He's here on the Zoom with us. Um, we're both at eXp Realty and the Lynch Legacy Realty Group based out of Parker County. We started this agent opportunity series as a way to engage and network with our fellow agents. And the goal is to hopefully provide some quick videos, some quick tips and some quick information that we all can actually use in our daily business lives. So we're hoping to cover things that maybe you have more questions about and we can connect you with the correct vendors for that. Or, um, you know, things that we didn't learn when we got our real estate license. We all know we learn as we go. So I just wanted to give a quick uh, little blurb about why we're doing this. Um, I'll let Carl say hello, and he's going to introduce our presenter for today. Thank you, Brandy. So Kirsten Zoom is somebody I've been working with for a while. She's been tremendously helpful for me, teaching me a lot and helping me uh, get a lot of clients over the finish line. And there's been a lot of talk, of course, recently about rates and when are the rates going to go down. And so now it's becoming more and more clear that maybe it's a good, good idea to start promoting buy downs more. So we just uh, invited the Kirsten over to, to talk a little bit about that. So I'll, I'll let her go on it now. Hi, thanks, Carl, Brandy. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Kirsten. I'm with Benchmark Mortgage. Um, we're a mortgage banker, broker, and uh, been been working in the mortgage industry for uh, 29 years, really long time. So um, thanks for joining. We're going to talk about interest rate buy downs today. Um, there's different types of interest rate buy downs, um, and there's certain situations where um, one type of buy down is better than another. So I'm going to kind of just uh, start talking about that. Um, so first, let's talk about just what is a definition of a buy down. Uh, a buy down is an upfront payment made by the buyer, the seller, or the lender that temporarily or permanently reduces the in initial interest rate of the mortgage loan. And of course, this helps give that person a lower payment. So, um, and, and so you talk about buy downs, temporary buy downs is one type and permanent is another. And people will use the verbiage a lot, discount points in, in talking with the permanent buy down. So, um, uh, and so, well, I didn't switch screens fast enough, but yeah, so, um, so there's different uh, types of temporary buy downs. So we'll talk about temporary buy downs first. So um, how the temporary buy down works is interest is paid up front and the lender holds that money in a subsidy account or an escrow account to pay the difference in the interest of the payment over the term of that temporary time. So um, it's, it's not a fee. It's not a fee. It is really paying the difference and the interest just for that short period of time where the interest rate is 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 uh, lower. So um, and of course, the main benefit is to reduce the payment for the first one to three years, depending on what type of buy down the clients will use to allow them to have that monthly payment. Um, and the only drawback to the temporary buy down is that it does only reduce the rate temporarily. It's not going to be a forever thing. That's why we have a permanent buy down. The buy the point is is for the buyer to be able to have that lower payment initially to prepare to refinance or what we call a rate redo to be okay in the future, but they still need to when they purchase, they still need to be okay with whatever that final rate is. Um, even if they do a temporary buy down, we want to make sure that they they feel okay with the final payment in case they're not able to get out of that temporary buy down any sooner. So, so when we talk buy downs with buyers, um, we really want to be explaining them well, cautious, and making sure that it really fits in their purview about what's most important for what their long term and short term financial goals are. So what properties are eligible for buy downs? Um, you have single family residences. Um, as long as the condos meet loan guidelines, you can do a buy down on a condo or a duplex um, is fine. Triplex is fine as well, um, as long as it's an owner occupant. I didn't put this on the screen, but it does have to be an owner occupant. You can't use a temporary buy down for an investment property, and you cannot use a temporary buy down for a um, second home, or a um, or if they're 
you know, not going to live in the property as their primary residence. That's the big thing. Um, now, ineligible properties for buy downs is manufactured homes um, and mobile homes, and then, of course, unimproved land. And we haven't, I also did not put this on the screen, but we're not able to do buy downs on jumbos. So, um, so who pays for the buy down? So um, there's two options on the temporary buy down. Um, the seller contributes, the seller contributes funds to reduce that rate um, or the lender, the lender can help contribute towards that buy down as well. Um, the person that is not allowed to pay for a temporary buy down is the buyer. The buyer cannot contribute their own funds. Also, if you have a refinance and, and a buyer maybe was trying to do a cash out refinance or do something like that, you can't use a temporary buy down on a refinance product also, which I didn't mention on the previous screen. So um, the cost of the buy down, which is super important, is counted in the maximum seller contribution that's allowed for the loan. So, you know, there's on certain loan types with certain amounts down, there's only so much the seller is allowed to contribute per loan guidelines. So it's super important when we're talking about certain types of buy downs, if the cost is too substantial, it may not work for that particular property or that particular person. So here's kind of a, a cheat sheet that I can email you guys, um, but it's a seller concession cheat sheet for realtors. And so this is to remind you as, as we get um, in the market, I know we're not multiple offers in some areas right now, but um, if you're able to get seller concessions, it's super important to kind of use this chart because if there's a cost for the buy down, it's counted in these percentages. So um, just a side note about the NAR stuff that's happening. Um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which is conventional, has come out and said that if it's typical for the area, there's no longer going to be a requirement of any commission paid for by the buyer is not going to come out of these maximum seller contributions. So they've recently just said that. So if we're talking a little bit about seller contributions and buy downs, keep in mind if commission comes into play in the future, that that's not going to be counted against them on conventional. On FHA, they've, they've come out with the same verbiage as well. Um, we don't have any guidance on USDA yet on if that com what that commission is going to do on that. And on VA, we're waiting to hear from VA because right now uh, VA is prohibited from paying any non-allowable fees, which is considered commission to the buyer's agent. So we're waiting for them to rule on that. But just a side note on that, if you were doing a buy down with a VA um, or an FHA or conventional, if you, it will or will not impact any buyer's commissions that would have to be paid as well, depending on the loan type. So, um, but for example, when we're talking about some of these buy downs, if they put less than 10% down on a conventional loan, you can only get 3% seller concessions. So we would have to pick the buy down appropriate to make sure the cost fit for what we needed to do for that buyer so that you could let your seller know to make sure it was done right for the seller and that it was a win-win for the buyer as well. So that's why having a partnership with us, um, we can help navigate you through that. It, it, once we were talk, talking to your buyer and figuring out what was the best opportunity for them there. So what types of buy downs are there for the temporary buy downs? There are four different type ones. I know everyone hears about only a couple of them, but there's more options than that. There's the 1-0 buy down, the 1-1 one -one buy down, the 2-1 buy down, and the 3-2-1 buy down. And we're going to kind of talk about the benefits and drawbacks of each one of them. And I'm going to show you some examples. So we'll talk about the, the smallest one. We'll talk about the 1-0 temporary buy-down. So um, I just used a placeholder of 7.5% as our base rate. Um, and so a 1-0 buy-down, a 1-0 buy-down is only lowering it 1% for one year. So um, this allows time for that client to be able to jump in and get that lower rate initially. And then once that rates come down in 12 to 24 months, then they're able to then do a rate redo and refinance into a permanent lower rate. 
So the 1.0 buy down cost, again, is not as substantial. Um, so if you can see right here, I have a, um, a, a little calculator that I created for the 1.0 buy down. And my, my guinea pig loan program is based on a $400,000 loan amount or $400,000 price on an FHA loan, just putting three and a half percent down. So you can see you have your price of 400, your base loan amount, FHA's funding fee that's rolled in. You can see this right here is what I call the permanent column. So this is the seven and a half that they would end up with in years two through 30. And then you can see the loan amount with that PMI in there. And it shows you the payment on that $400,000 house with our fake taxes and insurance would be $3,876 a month. If we look at the one zero buy down and it went down 1%, it essentially saves that buyer for the first year every month, $263 a month. Now the savings that they get for 12 months is 3,165, essentially rolling it up. So, so that's a substantial savings. So what would it cost your seller? Your seller would be paying on this particular example or your lender 3,165 for this particular buy down. OK, so it is attractive because it does give some help, but it doesn't cost as much as some of the other buy downs do. So and, and some lenders don't even talk about this type of buy down. I typically will talk to my clients when we do pre-purchase consultations. Once I have them pre-approved, we meet for a Zoom or in person for a pre-purchase consultation. When we meet to do that, we will talk about um the savings, if they chose to do a buy down, if they were able to get a seller buy down, what was the best opportunity for them? Which one works best? So the second temporary buy down that we'll talk about is the one one. So this is is basically buys down the rate one percent for a consecutive two years. So if the clients are a little bit concerned that they um, that the rates won't come down fast enough, they want to make sure that it's stable at a lower percentage for two years consistently, this is where the one one comes in. Um, of course, everything is qualified on all of these temporary and permanent buy downs at, at the final interest rate. So they don't get to qualify at the lower rate, doesn't get them in more house on these temporary buy downs. They still have to be able to qualify with the higher rate, whatever that is. Um, so if we look at the example on the next one, the one one, you can see using the same $400,000 house and the same calculations, then you would have year one would be at the 6.50, year two would be at the 6.50. And so each year and for the first 24 months, you'd save $263 a month. And then for the first for 12 months, it's 3165. So the total amount saved for that buyer in interest savings would be 6329. Um, and so that's how much the one one would cost on that four hundred thousand dollar house for Mr. Buyer. Um, uh, for that, I'm sorry, for Mr. Seller. That's how much he would have to give in seller concessions to make this one one work. Okay. So the next one, which is the most common temporary buy down that you're going to hear about, is the two one temporary buy down. So um, in this example, year year one at five and a half percent, year two at six and a half percent, and years three through thirty permanently is seven and a half after that. So um, if, let me skip to the calculator on this one, and you can see. Um, in year one, you have a substantial savings per month, which is makes it, which is why I think this one is the most attractive from a buyer perspective, is that they do save a good five hundred and seventeen dollars a month on a four hundred thousand dollar house just in their payment on that first year. So just for the first year, they save sixty one hundred and ninety five dollars, and then the second year they. That's $3,165 for that year. Total amount that this buy down would cost the seller would be about $9,359 total. So that would be the amount that you would put in your seller concession or you would want to round it to $9,400. Because remember, the buyer can't pay for it. So it has to be accurate on the contract because the seller is going to contribute that unless 
there was a way that we were able to contribute as well. It just depends on what the market looked like in the pricing at the time for that particular buyer. Now, here's the 321 buy down, and this one is a great, great buy down, but it is more costly for the seller, so it's not done as often. And this is where, if you were to do a conventional loan and you had a buyer putting 3% down or putting 5% down, this cost of this buy down might exceed the cost of what the seller is allowed to pay for the loan. Because remember, the seller is only allowed to pay 3% of seller concessions on a, on a home, on a, a home where somebody puts less than 10% down. So this one might not be the best option if you don't have a higher priced home um, where it, it may not work for the seller to pay for the 321 on that particular property. Now on an FHA, it would work because the seller can pay up to 6% of closing costs. But on the conventional, it would depend on how much client that client put down on whether or not it would be the right avenue for them. But you would have 4.5% the first year, 5.5% the second year, 6.5% the third year, and then after that it would re revert to the final interest rate of 7.5% for years 4 through 30. So if we look at the buy down calculator for the 321, you can see down here in total savings for 24 months, it's $21,430. So on this $400,000 house, that, that's pretty costly. So this would be not one that you could use with less than 10% down on a conventional loan. It would be able to be, it would have to be like a 6% seller concession and it may not work for all of them. So that's why it's super important to have a lender partner that we would discuss this and make sure that it was all set up the right way for the both the buyer and the seller, again, as a win-win. Um, but the 321 is super popular. I've seen builders use this one as long as they're within their seller concession, right? Um, or sometimes, again, it can be the seller or the builder and a combination of the lender. You have to keep in mind, though, that there's not a lot of margins left on the loans for the lender to pay on these buy downs. So sometimes if the lender does contribute on those types of things, then it does inflate the rate a little bit that you would end up with the final rate, which then uh, would change all of these instead of if maybe if it, if the lender paid a little bit, maybe you end up with 7.6 versus seven and a half, just as an example. Does that make sense? Um, so this particular one, I mean, it's it, it's it would be pretty attractive if it fit for the right person mm -hmm. in the right house. Again, it may not fit for everyone. That's why we have the four different options to make sure that we're picking the right option that fits specifically for that buyer and that seller. But on this particular one, I mean, it, it lowers their payment a thousand dollars a month for the first year, which is pretty pretty powerful. And then it and it and then it changes at five hundred seventeen the second year. 265 the third year and then reverts to the final mortgage payment of 3877. So, um so temporary buy down. So what what if the client gets in this temporary buy down? He gets in this 21 buy down. He starts at 5.5% and interest rates next year drop to five and a quarter. So what happens? So um, for an example, this example, I have, I'm sorry, I pressed the screen too fast. Um, but on this example, let's just say um, he stayed in it for one full year. So he saved $516 a month and he wants to refinance out of it before it goes to six and a half because rates are in the mid fives. It's a smart time for us to redo his loan then they would take whatever that amount was. And I think I transposed my numbers, but um, essentially whatever the cost was left over that the buy down had not used would be put on the principal of that buyer's loan. So that money is not a fee. It doesn't go away. That money would go to reduce what that client owed. And when we do a rate redo, if I close a loan with a client and I refinance them within three years, there are no lender fees from us at all. The only fees that the client pays on that rate redo is, you know, title fees, uh, appraisal if it's required, 
and um, and we would use the same survey, maybe um, recording taxes, insurance. So they would pay those things and we could roll them into their new loan uh, when we do their rate redo. So that the, the point is, is that if there's additional funds that are added to the principal of the loan, and then we had to roll in for a rate redo, that helps offset that cost for the refinance that, that clients worry about after, when they're able to refinance and get rid of that higher rate. So it is a really, really smart thing um, to do that and to be able to be super cognizant of when the rates drop you know, if you have a client in the buy down that we try to get them out of that buy down if the rates are in that range so that they can then use that money and add it to the principal of their loan and help essentially pay for that rate redo. So permanent buy down. So we'll just talk a little bit about permanent buy downs. Um, uh, permanent buy downs are where the borrower or the, or the lender or the seller can pay for a permanent buy down for the buyer makes an upfront payment to permanently reduce the mortgage interest rate for the entire life of the loan. So the benefit of doing this is that it does result in lower payments forever. It's a long-term type of product. Um, the drawbacks is, is that upfront cost of a permanent buy down can be quite a bit higher than the temporary buy down. Um, and it's not smart to do a permanent buy down if we think we're not gonna stay in that property or stay in that mortgage. Cause again, the interest rate is temp temporary. The property and the price of the house is permanent, but we want to look at the drawbacks of in a high interest rate environment of sevens, if you were to buy down that rate, to six and a half is that's a smart thing to do because how long do we think they'll stay in that mortgage before the market shifts and they want to do a rate redo? So when a permanent buy down is a smart thing to do is in a lower interest rate environment when we know they're going to keep that loan long enough. A permanent buy down is not always smart enough to do unless you can permanently buy it down enough to stop a client from having to redo that mortgage. So I have, um, just to go back again, the seller is does pay for this. This can be paid for just like temporary buy-down with seller concessions. It's not ever really called a permanent buy-down. A lot of times your sellers or you guys will just refer to it as closing cost or as paying points to buy down that rate. Um, but it can be paid for by the lender. It can be paid for by the seller. The buyer can pay for a permanent rate buy down. Clients do it all the time. So again, it depends on where we are in the market with the mortgage rates and where we think they're headed. Um, right now, again, we're in the mid sevens. So right now we are estimating the Fed could still do a rate cut. We've got about a 50% chance of the Fed doing a rate cut in July. Um, and another rate cut after that. But if jobs numbers come in strong and the economy keeps coming in stronger than anticipated, then this could take some of those rate cuts off the table. So we might be looking at temporary buy downs for a longer period of time and using this product to really help those clients that are really tired of sitting on the sidelines because they've been waiting for two years for interest rates to come down. They have weddings, they have children being born, they have children moving out of houses and they need to be able to move to the next step and not feel like they're frozen where they're going to be paralyzed by it being too expensive for them in that property. So um, talking about the permanent buy down, if we look at just a fake little synopsis I did here um, and it shows you if you were to, um, I just keep clicking, I apologize. So it shows you how much savings that you would have um, if you were to do a permanent buy down. So in this example, it was uh, one, the first example is 6.75. The second is 7%, the third is seven and a quarter and seven and a half. So when you do a mortgage, you can talk about what's called a par rate. A par rate means that I, as a lender, I don't charge an origination fee or a discount fee 
at all for that loan. So our par rate, our benchmark rate would at this example would be seven and a half percent. So they're not paying any cost for the rate at all. They may still pay a processing and an underwriting fee and an attorney fee for the lender, but they're not going to pay any type of buy down for that rate at all. So in this example, that payment was $38.74, and that client was coming with about $27,700. So we look at if they were to buy it down seven and a quarter, the cost for that for a quarter percent was half a point. Now, it's not always the where you get down a quarter or you get down a half, it only costs a half. It doesn't work like that. When a permanent buy-down is calculated, it's based on the mortgage bond market, and that bond market changes multiple times a day. I could bring it up right now and show you a candlestick and it'll show you that sometimes we see changes three, four or five times a day constantly. So the cost of these rates and the cost of the permanent buy down is going to change from a client I talked to today. If they don't go under contract and secure that property for three or four months, that interest rate can't be locked in and we can't talk about that permanent buy down cost, what's the best thing for them until they go under contract. But in this example, yesterday, it just happened to cost about a half a percent, which is about $2,000. That's a half of a loan amount is what a discount point is 1% of the loan amount. So it costs about $2,000 to buy down your rate a quarter, and that client would save $66 a month. Okay. If they chose to try to go down to 7%, it was costing 1%. So it was essentially costing $4,000 to permanently buy that rate down from seven and a half to seven. Or I think some pricing, some investors were at 699, all right? So that's $134 or $133 a month savings. So that's good, but you did spend $4,000 up front. So we're going to look at a chart next, and I'm going to show you how long it takes to break even on these upfront costs to make sure it's even worth it for this client. Um, and then we have 6.75 was costing one and a half points, essentially $6,000, right? Just to round it um, for $199 a month cheaper. So again, you think you always want to go automatically. Well, the lowest rate is the cheapest rate. Not always. How long are they going to be in the loan? How much is it going to save them per month? And how long are they going to be in the loan? Because would they rather bring $27,000 to closing or 32? Okay. And even if the seller, and this is with the buy, if the buy down, the permanent buy down was being paid for by the buyer, but even if it's being paid for by the seller, it still may not be the best thing for them in this particular instance if we really believe that within 18 to 24 months, our rates will drop significantly enough that they're not going to have this loan anymore. So a permanent buy down is really a fee to the lender for the cost to obtain that rate. It's not like a temporary buy down where they're just the interest is set aside by the lender and they're actually gonna get that back if they don't use that. This is like, you pay it, it's gone, okay? And so again, if they were staying in this house 30 years, I could show you a chart and 6.75 would be a no brainer. They would save a ton in interest, but they're not gonna stay in the mortgage for 30 years more than likely. So the next chart shows you, it's like a break even chart. So it shows you right here, um, let me move this, that they would save 390, it, they wouldn't even break even on this six and three quarters, okay? They wouldn't break even on it at all. Even this is an 18 month scenario. So them paying $6,000 up front, they wouldn't even break even in 18 months. It would They would be negative $400 essentially, right? So, so that, that is, that is one thing that again, unless it's going to be beneficial, there's no reason to do it. Now, if you started looking 24, 36 months, then maybe that buy down would be better. But if we truly believe that within 12 to 18 months, they're not going to be in this loan anymore, why give all that money to the lender? Okay. 
And so, and if you look here, 7% was the biggest loser, apparently. So when they did the calculations of what you had to pay to get the 7%, you were going to be in the hole in 18 months still on your interest savings, $900. And then seven and a quarter was about $460 to the negative after 18 months of the difference in the payment versus what they paid up front. And then you look at zero here, of course, seven and a half is our benchmark. So it would be smart because it'd be better to pay zero and pay a slightly higher rate, but then we should be able to get out of that within a certain period of time without having to throw a bunch of money at it. And I tell clients, I'm like, if you truly want a lower rate, the smartest thing you can do is save your money. Don't put it towards a permanent buy down now. Save it, put it in an account. When we redo your loan, if you want to buy it down then, and make sure that it's really, really low then when we have that opportunity, mm -hmm. you can do that. Now, um, I told Brandy that I did have somebody yesterday that wanted to know how much it would cost permanently to buy the rate down to 5.99. Because they're like, if I'm going to pay for a 321 buy down and I'm going to be $17,000 to $20,000 out of pocket on a 321 buy down, can I then have that same amount of money and use it towards a permanent? And it did. The numbers worked. So in that particular instance, then that seller was willing with that agent was willing to say this amount of money we're going to give and they can use it to buy it down to five nine nine or they can use it for the temporary buy down. And now you don't always it doesn't always work out that way. It just happened to work out that way on this particular scenario. Um, and if the market were to shift up, maybe it wouldn't be as favorable. And you also have sellers that there's some sellers are not going to be able to contribute that much. And the buyer doesn't want to contribute any, and maybe it doesn't work out. But when we do our pre-purchase consultations with clients, we will have this conversation with that buyer and we will determine what is the best course of action. Is it a temporary buy down? Is it a permanent buy down? Is it using it for your closing costs? Because maybe they don't have the money to get in that house. Or, um, I mean, what what is our final ultimate goal there? So that is pretty much all I wanted to share with you guys um, was just a little bit about buy downs, seller concessions, just how we can use these numbers and use these different types of financing to really boost up your listings and use that to get more buyer activity. And because a lot of what we deal with right now is affordability. And so making a strategy to make that property more affordable for that buyer so that they're not sitting on the sidelines and waiting another year and losing at minimum a five to 6% appreciation on that house, that same house could be 6% more expensive in a year. And then even if the rates are down, it would still not be smart for them to wait because they'll end up costing more. Because again, the price for the house is permanent and the interest rate is temporary. Kirsten, thank you so much. That was so thorough. I actually wrote down questions and you actually answered them before I could ask them. <laughs> Well, that was my, yeah. Do y'all have any <laughs> other questions about any of this that I, I can? Have, I have one. Yes. Can you do both? You sort of, yes. There, so like yes. If a buyer yeah. wanted to buy it down, but then also got a contribution from a builder or from a, or from a seller, they could also do the, the, the temporary. You could do a little bit of both. Yes. Yes, okay. but it would it, there's we would have to be really careful how we do it because again the buyer cannot pay for the temporary on their own. So could Absolutely. they pay? No. Could they pay a discount point or whatever, and there, so that their start rate came out lower? So I mean I'm sorry, so their final rate came out lower. So could they pay half a point and get and start and have their final rate be at seven, and then start out at five? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the, the one thing I talk when I talk to buyers about, especially if they've owned a home in the past, is have you refinanced the you know past homes that you've had? And the answer is almost always yes, a couple of times. And the circumstances are different every time, but that's why the temporary to me seems like so much better idea. You've done it in the past, you're probably going to do it in the future. There's going to be changes along the way that would 
that would dictate a refinance along, you know, obviously a lower interest rate would be one of them. Well, and if the seller can only contribute $10,000 and that's only going to get you in a 2-1 buy down or it's or it's or if they did a permanent buy down, it's only going to get them from like seven and a half to six and three quarters. We are pretty certain that we're going to be within 12 to 24 months in the low sixes, if not the fives, right? So it would be silly to do that permanent to get them to six and three quarters when they could get the temporary, like you said, wait it out and then get in the fives because the chances of them getting out of that six and three quarters in 12 to 24 months is pretty great. And you don't lose that money. So that money you just don't that lose that money. Yeah, beginning. going to the principal of the loan, it goes. And again, it's not going to be like they don't hand you a check, tell people. It goes against the principal of the loan. Yeah. And it's all done at loan payoff. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we would just roll in any closing costs or anything associated um, with a rate redo for wh whoever's cost they were. And uh, we would roll that into their new loan. And then when 30 days came around, it would give it back to them on the principal of their loan. And it would hopefully wash it out. Sure. And essentially, the seller paid for you to refinance it. If you looked at that money that was sitting in that escrow account, it was supposed to go toward towards paying the, the interest over those 12, 24 months. Essentially, that money kind of paid for the refinance. Yes. And and um, and and if they if you look at it and I've had some exceptions where people will say, well, what if I what if I just had them come down on the price? You can have them come down on the price instead of doing that, but you're only going to save about $7 per thousand. So if they came down on the price, $10,000, you would save about 70 bucks a month. That's it. Compared and then you would be at the higher rate. Years. It doesn't make sense. I don't think it makes sense. I think it makes sense to do it the other way. Um, but I mean, we would look at the math. Each client is different. So I'm not going to push one way or the other. I'm just going to say what I recommend and share with them the information. And we would make a confident decision together based on what their goals are. Okay. Thank you. Amanda, do you have a question? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. No. Does anyone else have questions? Please feel free to unmute yourselves. And ask away. Okay. And then um, Kirsten has a cheat sheet that she mentioned uh, during her presentation that she can send. If you would like a copy, just drop your email in the chat, please. And she can send you a copy. And then, of course, uh, you know, if you have questions, make sure you take a picture, a screenshot. She's got her contact information here. Um, she's very knowledgeable. She's thorough. She does great buyer consultations. She uses a lot of software too, will help you market. Um, and she uses great platforms that I personally haven't experienced with other lenders. So um, she's just a good person to know. And what do you, um, is it just your name that you do on your TikTok when you do your market updates? Um, it's Kirsten Z Mortgage Lender. Okay. If you're not following her on TikTok, and I think you share them on other social platforms, Yeah, on right? Instagram, it's Kirsten Z. Yeah, and on Facebook, it's Kirsten Z. Very watch detailed, that. very good videos with market updates. Yeah, watch that. Uh, watch that spelling on Kirsten. It's a little tricky. Everybody <laughs> wants to talk K R. Right? K R. Right? Not K Y, not K R. <laughs> it, it is a little tricky. You're right. You're right. Well, real quick. Hey, one more thing I want to mention, yeah. and I want, I'm sorry to, to bring it at the very end here, is that when I'm when I'm working with a buyer, I make sure that I have almost a consultation with my lender, their lender and hopefully it's you, to make sure that I'm asking for the right amount of money so we can get them what they're looking for. Because if they don't tell you, you're, the lender will. Yes. If you're a newer agent, um, and well, even if you're seasoned, frankly, if you're not having a conversation with your buyer's lender directly on the phone to learn what you're allowed to know about their situation and their goals, you need to make sure you're doing that before you get under contract with your buyers. Because how you're negotiating will be determined off what they're discussing with that loan officer. So that's really important. 
for sure. And I have a buy down calculator that has, um, that can calculate the cost of each of these buy downs. So if you have a specific listing that you need help with marketing, uh, we can make flyers um, with a picture of the house, data about the house, and it shows the three payments or the two payments, whichever buy down we use. We can, you, we can help put those, um, make some and send them to you for you to put in your property, to use it in open house. And um, I'm also creating some um, financing signs, some creative financing uh, signs that you could put up in the yard as well to get people to call. Awesome. Yeah, you're helping uh, Carl and I with one of our listings right now. So we're excited to see how that goes. But all right. Well, thank you, everyone who hopped on. Um, and for those of you who are going to watch this uh, recorded version, thank you. Please make sure you reach out to Kirsten. If Carl and I uh, with EXP and Lynch Legacy, if we can ever be of help with networking or getting you in contact with the vendor or just knowing each other to maybe work a transaction together, please reach out to us as well. Um, our next uh, video and Zoom for our agent opportunity series is actually going to be on May 7th. Our presenter is going to be Sherry Johnson. She's with Legacy Land and Title, and she's going to give us quick information on the title commitment. It's one of those things we don't learn when we get our license. And it's probably something that you as an agent may not even really be reviewing when you get you know, that sent to you. And you should be looking at it. So she's going to go through title commitment and explain all the different schedules and how we can better help our clients with that. So we hope to see you guys there. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Appreciate it. Have a great day.